Hi everyone, it's Celeste and I'm with Bowser today. Bowser, say hi. Bowser, Bowser. Okay, Bowser is not saying hi, but look at us. We're matching, heck yeah. This is my sloth romper for my little dog. Earlier this year, I created this sloth dress. So I hope you enjoy this little tutorial on how to make a little dog romper. Obviously my dog isn't little, but you get what I mean. Make sure to subscribe to my channel for more awesome DIY fashion for me, you, everyone, even including your pets. And make sure to like if you enjoyed this video and seeing my dog. So let's get started with this DIY. I just wanted to show you how cute my dog is. Oh my God. Okay, no real, we start the DIY. So for this, you're going to need your pet and you're going to need them to be very good and stay still for you. You're going to measure across the back of the neck and then all the way to the end part of their body. It's super helpful to have a toy in front of your dog or your pet so that they lay still. My dog is 19 inches across the back and then you want to measure down part of his legs so you want to get them to stand up and then you want to measure how far down you want to the sleeves to be. For my dog, I wanted to go from the spine all the way down and it was 13. And then I did the same measurement for the hind legs as well. You're such a good boy. You did a good job. Okay, next part. Okay, so I'm using tissue paper to create this pattern and modify it. So first I am going to be doing it on the fold. So I'm putting it at the very edge of the piece of tissue paper. And then I'm marking out how long it needs to be for the animal. And since mine was 19 inches, I'm going to make it 19 inches in length. Now, because animal anatomy is very different from humans, we can just go straight into the little sleevey part from the neckline. And I just wanted to be safe and I measured out how big I need to make the sleeves. I needed it to be about seven inches around. So I did mark where it needed to be, which was three and a half. We are going to be cutting two pieces for the top and I will show you that in a second. Bowser, you're in the way. Bowser, you're in the way. Next, you want to connect your lines from the bottom to the top. And because it's going to go around the animal, you want to make sure that it doesn't go too far. So that way it can still go potty and not dirty up their clothes. And so repeat this process to the back and make sure that you give enough space for the feet and for the edge. And then you want to connect it in the middle. So you kind of get this U shape and then you want to cut it out. Just like I showed you in the introduction, I'm going to be using this Jersey Sloth fabric. It's very nice and comfortable on any type of skin and I have just enough to do the base of the romper for my dog. So I'm going to fold it in half lengthwise and then I'm going to pin down the pattern on top of it. And once it's completely pinned, you want to cut it out. I kind of made this curve thinking that his back rump was really big, but it wasn't when I put it onto it. So I still kept it. And then I gave a little bit of extra room in the front here because when I put it next to him, again, I didn't think it gave enough room. So I added about an inch or half an inch there, probably about three centimeters there. And then continue cutting it all out. After removing all of the pins, I'm going to use this other jersey that matches my dress. And this is just a spotted paint jersey. And I'm going to be using it as the bottom side of the romper for the front part of it. And this is going to go along the chest line and then along the front part of the sleeves. And then I'm going to make sure that the hem is even or the cut is even right where it goes. And then I'm going to begin pinning that down. Since Jersey fabric is pretty forgiving, I went ahead and just cut it out. I didn't pin it, obviously, you can tell in the video. So yeah, go ahead and do that. It's probably better if you pin it or you use pattern weights. If you notice here, this is where I'm cutting out the bottom of it. It's not in half, but it's about a crop top, what you would say for a human. And this is what I'm doing for the dog. Because my dog has a lot of extra skin, I'm going to be cutting out a nice big neckline for him. And if your dog doesn't have a lot of skin, don't worry about a big neckline. But if they do have a lot of fur, do worry about it. Now I'm going to pin the areas where I am going to sew it, which is right at the beginning where the crop top to the edge of the sleeves, the shoulder areas, and then on the other side. 
Now take it to the sewing machine and begin sewing down the areas that you just pinned, aka the two shoulder areas and then the under part of the sleeve, and you should be done with this basic sewing part. I can't remember if I put this in another video, but I am going to be using fold over elastic. I treat fold over elastic just like a bias tape. I'm going to be sewing it on one side and then I'm going on the right side and sewing on top of it. You can see that I'm sewing on the wrong side and that is because the right side is going to have a very beautiful trim line. So we want to do this side first. The thing that I am doing wrong here is that I am not stretching the elastic, which I learned to do that later and it really changed the shape. So when you are initially first sewing it down on the back, you want to stretch the elastic. Now when I get to the edge, I'm going to sew the elastic on top of itself, giving it a nice little tail edge, and then I'm going to cut it off. This way, I don't have any extra excess and it's fully binding. Now onto the finishing part, turn your garment inside out and then begin sewing down the top part of the elastic, folding it over. Make sure that you definitely get this one correct because you want this elastic to last and make sure you fold it nice and even, that way you get a great hemline. Like I said earlier, if you did stretch the elastic, it wouldn't stretch wrong and you won't end up with like a weird ruffle effect and that is not what we want. But this is how nice and easy it is and all you have to do is just sew it and then repeat all these steps for the other areas. See, it's so clean. I did use the tape on the sleeves on the front legs and on the hind legs I cut two pieces of the tape and I'm sewing it down as usual and I'm going to sew it onto itself not just the fabric and I'm going to create a loop from that causing it to create a little hole for the legs to be attached. So once you have sewn your binding onto the hemline and sewn the binding to itself Go ahead and sew itself together making a loop, turn it inside out, and then cut off the excess. Once you have finished both hind legs, little bias loopies, and cutting off any excess threads, make sure to turn your garment inside out to the right spot. Or is it right side out? Yes! Flip your garment right side out, and now you are ready for your little furry friend to wear the new item you have made them. One of the reasons why I didn't make leg holes on the back and made loops was because he does a lot of dirty business back there and I didn't want the clothes getting super dirty, so instead I opted just for the loops and it was so much easier. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them down below. Subscribe to my channel for more awesome DIYs, fashion, cosplay, and maybe some animal cuteness. 
make sure to like this video if you enjoyed watching my dog and his little transformation. And don't forget, stay inspired and be creative, and I'll see you in the next video.